Ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you for joining us. Welcome to the second session of the day, Shaping AI Policy Landscape for a Digital Africa. We have some wonderful presentations lined up for you. Kicking us off is Professor Vukosi Marivate. Professor Vukosi is an Associate Professor of Computer Science and holds an ABSA UP Chair of Data Science at the University of Pretoria. He specializes in developing machine learning and artificial intelligence methods to extract insights from data with a particular focus on the intersection of ML AI and natural language processing. His research is dedicated to improving the methods, tools, and availability of data for local and low resource languages. Professor Vukosi is a co-founder and CTO of the Lelapa AI, an African startup focused on AI for Africans by Africans. He is a chief investigator on the Masakane NLP project, which aims to develop NLP technologies for African languages. And he is also a co-founder of the Deep Learning in Daba, the leading grassroots machine learning and artificial intelligence conference on the African continent that aims to empower and support African researchers and practitioners in the field. Professor Vukosi will be answering a few questions on the techniques to improve tools and availability of data for local languages and low resource um, languages. Welcome, Prof. Let me get right into the first question. One primary truth about AI is that it is data heavy. And as such, I believe it matters what language is being used on and for this data. Could you tell us the state of African languages in light of AI and whether there is hope for languages that do not have a presence on the web and therefore are not included in pre-trained models? Africa has like 2000 plus African languages. So if we really start thinking about um, those languages and how they get represented in a lot of these new um, kind of AI tools that everybody's using, uh, you will find that there's very few of them really represented well. Um, the one thing I'd want people to understand is that when we think about natural language processing, so the way that the machines process language, um, if you think about text, if you think about audio, all those things, uh, we don't need to necessarily just think about chatbots. Uh, there's a lot of tasks that uh, for most people are important. So if you're thinking maybe something like translation, you might be trying to translate from Chichewa to Swahili and having very good tools for that. These are things that are worth exploring and finding ways to actually improve. It's just that if we think very narrowly, on these generalized kind of generative AI tools, um, then you really hit up very quickly on the limitations of not having easily accessible, um, some might say free uh, data textually, if the same thing is going to go in into transcription or audio or, or automatic speech recognition. But uh, if we're having 2000 plus languages on the continent, this is a, is a major challenge, um, getting access to data as one, but the other one is thinking about compute. So can you build actually these models? So you need to have a lot of compute. And at the moment, that is most heavily skewed towards the West and really in the hands of private companies as opposed to even academics or people in governments. And then uh, lastly is the capacities and capabilities. So do we have the capacity, the human resources on the continent to work in these spaces? And then do we have the capabilities that we've built over time? Um, I believe we have. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of Masakani, and then we built up uh, a, a, a huge network across the continent of people who are working and interested in, in African languages and AI. And, and, and like, you know, that takes care of one piece, uh, but it requires more than technical solutions, it requires us uh, to have very clear policies on how data becomes available, rights to research, uh, ways that people can share um, data, can share models, uh, those types of things. So in, 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 in order for us to have language as an infrastructure that enables sustainable development, we really have to work at it. And it has to be all of society that really works on trying to resolve these uh, challenges that face language and AI specifically. 
As we explore the intersection of language, AI, and sustainability, it is important to acknowledge how the narratives we construct can shape our understanding and approach to these critical issues. Language is not just a medium of communication, but in the context of sustainability, language used can carry implicit biases and stereotypes that influence policy making, public perception, and global discourse. What are some of the Western language biases and embedded stereotypes about sustainability? Uh, in thinking about Western language biases and stereotypes about sustainability, um, one of the things that has come out probably in the last 18 to 24 months or so, is especially since like you know, the, the boost of generative AI, has been this tension about open source as being the only way forward or closed source as being the like you know the other opposite and the only other way forward. Um, the thing is, if you're sitting and you're thinking about culture, you're thinking about language, uh, and then you're thinking about equity, the only having options to say it's on, everything that we create should just be completely open uh, or completely closed is, is not really taking into account the realities of people want to be represented. They want their cultures, their language to be represented in the systems that they use. At the same time, they do understand that if you just release everything openly, like completely, like you know, almost CC zero, how do we get to equity where um, Africans are the ones who are also building the models, who are also building up the, the like you know, the infrastructures. They're building up the industries around those things, so that we can also be part of these kind of AI-driven economies as well. If you don't do that, then there's there's no opportunity at all, right? Um, that's that's one part. The other one is also agency that people then want to choose how their information is actually used or information about their language or their their cultures. So these are things that are still out and being debated and uh, likely will come to uh, some parts of the pillars that are set up are things like equitable licensing, which I hope there's a lot of discussions at, at the CS Africa Law Tech uh, Festival, and then also getting people to understand the rights and responsibilities that they have around there. I think um, for us, it's not theoretical. And, and then maybe that's the, the biggest misconception. It's not, it's not a theoretical discussion. It's really something that needs to be um, uh, kind of uh, fully fleshed out, and then we can have uh, directions that are put for us to go forward. Given the work that you do at Masakane, what are some examples of products developed based on African natural language processing? Um, examples of products developed. Um, so there's many, so in different spaces. So as I said, I co-founded Masakane, co-founded Lilapa uh, AI and AI startup, Pan-African AI startup based in, in Joburg at the moment, but then higher across the continent. And then uh, also I'm at the University of Pretoria as, as, as an academic, as a professor. And uh, for Masakane, like, you know, from the beginning, it was, hey, how do we show that we can build up, uh, like, you know, in a participatory manner, um, natural language processing tools for African languages, make them available and see what people do with them. And also from the experiences. So you would have seen the first paper was on translation, but now there's work on on, on speech, there's work on parts of speech tagging, um, uh, sentiment analysis, many, many other uh, tooling that is becoming available and then gets expanded on. At the same time in thinking also about the societal impact of these these systems and how then they can be improved. I think one of the things to look out for is that Masakane will be sharing soon its um, strategy of, of building forward and what has to change now. If you remember Masakane started in 2019 and now we're in 2024, five years later. Uh, what we are gonna where we started is not uh, we're not gonna do the same things going forward. And I, as an advisor to the board, I look forward to um, to really uh, seeing how the community engages. And the community is not just a Masakane community. We understand it's much, much uh, broader than that. At Lilapa, uh, we are building really, uh, uh, you know, uh, a socially responsible AI. And in this case, we've also been looking at language first. So we've got an API that's out, that's available. People have been interacting with, with, with speech recognition, with translation. Uh, but as of... Um, last week, we also released Incuba LM, uh, which is a 
uh, a small language model um, in available in six African languages. And we're really interested in seeing what people build with it. And it's the first African language model um, uh, built on the continent and, and really uh, trying to see what's possible and what people will give us feedback on. And at the university, you know, where uh, it's a, 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 like, you know, mostly academic staff and students, there's a lot that's still going on also in that space in, in building lots of different tools at the Data Science for Social Impact Group. I'd wish for you to invite us to plug into this work you're already doing. So how can people analyze your models and participate in strengthening and sparring NLP research in African languages for Africans by Africans? Um, on how people can get involved and analyze, um, for a lot of the tooling that people are trying to uh, make, uh, one of the things is trying to make them easily accessible so people can then try them out. Um, but don't be afraid to send direct feedback. So if there's something you try out, uh, whether it's on Masakane, it's on Ghana NLP, it's on Lilapa, it's on Data Science for Social Impact at the University of Pretoria, sending an email and saying like, look, I tried this out. Um, this is where I found some problems. Um, that that's always good, like, you know, very much welcome because it does also get people to see that other people are seeing things and then they are also identifying um, uh, gaps. When it comes to languages that you might not find yet have been um, covered, reach out to some of the researchers with the languages you're interested in and say like, look, I'm not, I've got these types of skills. What could I be doing? Um, I think a lot of this is going to come into a really multi-pronged approach when we think about um, how society treats language. Uh, what I mean by that is that, like, for example, if you have newspapers in a country, if you have a national broadcaster, if you have government also creating content in local languages, how does it get archived? What kind of licensing happens? How do researchers use that? How do people build on that? If people want to go commercial, how, what are the, uh, the, like, you know, the infrastructure to take care of the shared benefits in those spaces? This is something that's going to become more and more important as time goes on and it, it's required. And a lot of this is again, not the technical issue of AI and building the models. It really becomes these adaptive problems where we have to really engage with people and then find ways to change policies to, 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 to educate people and then get to a point where we all have a shared understanding of where we want to go. Um, you know, if, if I can have a personal ambition and say we have 2000 plus languages, um, I, I would like in the like next 20 years, a thousand of, of, of them being very well represented um, in like, you know, and that's not, you, you don't need to be in English or Spanish or German, but you need to have a, a, a combination that yes, on AI, there's some things in linguistics, there's more, there, there's, there's more resources, there's more study in those spaces. And then people are just free to be who they are across the continent. And it, it it's not lost on us, like, you know, that even here we're, we're communicating in English, but we want to have that tooling that allows people to use whichever languages in the future and for us just to be able to speak, right? And, and then share our ideas across um, the different languages and then people being able to understand each other. Um, and that will then in, like, you know, enable more and more people to, to really participate in general society. So yeah, thank you. And I think those are my thoughts. Thank you so much for your time and insights, Prof. Thank you.